Hi everyone, I'm Vishnu Subramaniam, founder of Jarvis Labs. In this video, we are going to look at a new model called Stable Cascade, which was launched in 12th February. It has been really good at generating high quality images, along with generating images with really good quality text. It also does a lot of interesting things, like it's probably one of the biggest model that Stability has released. But it also happens that it is one of the fastest model, as we can see in some of their performance reports. And Stability uh, mentions that it's one of the best model. From playing with it, I can also say the results are really uh, amazing to see. But uh, there is always a but at the end. The licensing is for non-commercial use cases, only for research, uh, research purposes. So in we, what we will do in this video is just like our similar, just like our past videos, we are going to create a workflow from where we left. That's we take a basic workflow in Comfy UI, and we figure out how to create this architecture using Comfy UI nodes, and see if we are able to reproduce some of these amazing images, right? To do this, we are going to use uh, Comfyui examples as a reference. So if you go to GitHub Comfyui repository, they have an examples section where they have curated or they have created a really amazing set of examples. So we will start with this example called text to image. There are a bunch of things we can do with this stability cascade. Uh, one is image to image, image variations, probably this is one of my favorite. And as usual, the control net, LoRa, and many more. You can find your own LoRa model. There are scripts available, but I think the community as overall is waiting for SD3 to be released. We are also very uh, anxious to see how SD3 turns out to be and what license it's going to come out and how the community uh, builds a lot of things around it. So let's get to the Comfy UI and let's see how we can do our stuff, right? Uh, so what I've done is I have imported uh, the example workflow we have for stable cascade, which looks pretty big. So if you just start looking at it, it can look complicated. We will use this as a reference in case I get stuck somewhere. We'll just start with the default workload. That is when you say load default, you get this workflow in Comfy UI. Right? So which has this load checkpoint. So the first thing we will do is we will start with a cascade model. So if you're using a Java's Labs instance, this model is already loaded, so you can just pick it up. But if you're using your local instance, you can uh, download and put it in your checkpoints directly. You need uh, two models. One is stage C uh, tensor and stage B tensor. You can find the hugging face uh, link here. It has got the two safe tensors one is stage c and one is stage b once you download and put it your into your checkpoints directly you can start following so the first thing which is going to change is the empty latent image instead of using empty latent image we are going to use something called a stable cascade empty latent image we'll get to the reason in a minute so let's connect so there's there are two parts to stable cascade one is stage c and stage b let's try to build the stage c first which is this part of the diagram right so we are going to create an image just using stage c we will use this image and then we'll try to build this part in the computer right right let's go to our workflow we don't need to change this this is all uh, similar the text encode for positive and negative from the case sampler what we are going to do is we are going to combine the stage c latent image to the case sampler now you have the positive and negative prompt and uh, we don't need to do anything else for stage c1 okay it'll take some time to get loaded okay as we can see we got an image let's if you open this image you will realize that it's actually uh, a very small image not the one which we asked the one which we asked is 1024 1024 the reason for this is there's a two-step process the stage c is going to combine the text and create a latent image of this and the stage b is not going to really use the text it's going to combine the prompt and this image together 
and then we are going to uh, build the state C part of it. So if you have already looked into the Configure basic workflow, this part should be very clear. So what we are going to do is we are going to create another case sampler because we need uh, to load a different model. So let's also load a model which will help us to load the stage B. Right. Once we have this, let's connect the model here. Now we need to connect the positive to, uh, to this. But before we do that, so what we need to do here is we need to have a node that combines both the results from this positive prompt and the latent image. So I did our key sampler with just a minute. Let me combine this latent image with this and let's take the output of this and let's combine it here. So what we are doing is we are combining the uh, let's, let me pull these things so that it's very clear for you guys to see. <coughs> we are taking the output of the latent image and we are combining it to state C. So what this node is literally doing is it's concatenating the tensor that we get from the positive prompt with the latent image was generated that was generated using the state C model. So using this conditioning, the new case sampler is going to uh, generate a new image for us right so let's use the latent and let's do a VAD code let's get these two VA together right and let's preview the image so let's do a Q prompt right so we got the results, uh, but there are a few tweaks that we still need to do. So basically, if you have observed that it's actually taking slightly longer, but we don't need to do that to get a good result. So what we can do is we can have this 20 steps for the first case sampler. And here we can have something like 10 steps. So this is again, I'm trying to recreate from what Comfue examples has. So they had these values something similar to these not exact values but they have a lower config cfg value for the second key sampler and a higher cfg value for the first key sampler but still for very less to compare to the other stability models right and then we have said that first key sampler take 20 steps and for the second key sampler just take 10 steps and as you see here the model is being kind of upsampled using the stability model using the AA model and brought into a very high quality image. Let's open the image and see, right? Probably this is one of the uh, best models available out there, but the problem, the challenge is it's not available uh, as a fully commercial, commercial user product similar to the first version like V1.5 or STXL. We can try with different prompts. It takes around 15 seconds to get your image. So once you understand this basic workflow, uh, the rest of the other workflows that are shown in the example page becomes a lot easier. So what we will do is we will just look at the image to image or we will look at the image variations, which is slightly interesting and there's a small tweak to how it is built. Uh, so it will help you summarize the entire understanding of how the stable cascade works. So what we will do, let's clear this entire thing. And let's load the uh, workflow. I've already saved it. So it's image remixing, I think. Let's just check the name. Image variations. I'm not sure what it is saved as. I think it should be image remixing. Right. And to do this, we need to upload the mountains photo, which we have already. Right. And let's say Q prompt. Wait for a few seconds, we should have the image ready. So basically what now we are trying to do is we have an image, we have a text prompt and we are trying to create different variations of that image, right? So in order to do that, let's look at the workflow, how to do that, right?
So you can see here that instead of the load checkpoint, here we are using a new checkpoint loader called unclip checkpoint loader. What it's basically doing is it's giving us access to the clip module, which is used for converting this image into an embedding vector. So we normally use this clip for converting text into an embedding vector for but for doing image variations when we want uh, the model to take one image and generate more image similar images of that type we are going to use something called clip vision which is going to take this image as an input and it's going to generate the embedding so once we have the embedding of the text and the image what we are going to do is we are going to club them together using unclipped conditioning this is pretty similar to the way we combine the state C uh, image latent vector with the positive embedding vector. So similarly, we are doing here with the positive, basically the text prompt and the image itself. So the model now knows a rough representation of the image and the text that we want. Once we have that, we combine this uh, output to the case sampler for the positive the model is same negative prompt we are getting latent image we are st still getting it from the uh, empty latent image we also uh, want, need to understand what is happening in this node let's uh, let's get to it in a minute right the stage b is pretty similar or i'll say it's almost similar to what we saw in the earlier workflow and we have our beautiful image with our bottle just similar to what we asked for right Let's go back to this uh, stable cascade empty latent image to actually understand what is happening, right? So in the first state C, when we say this one is going to be like, uh, we want a latent image, right? And we are saying the width and height is 1024 and we use something called compression factor, which is 42. So what this is literally doing is it's dividing this so that it becomes 1024 by uh, 42 it's, it's close to 24 so you get a uh, small rectangle small square 24 24 and that's what is going to be your uh, latent image so what we can do is you can use something like preview or you can use something to print the shape and figure out figure that out the stage b the difference what stage b is going to do is it's going to create a image of 1024 1024 so we can easily do that by saying we have to do a VA decode because it's already there. We have to connect with the VAE. Okay, let me drag this a bit. And let me connect to the VAE. And let's preview the image. Right. And let's say Q prompt. Right. So we're getting a very small image. When we go here, we should be getting a pretty large image. Uh, let's connect this let's forget about this and let's delete this let's just keep this just to it helps us to understand what is happening let's do this okay i have to say bypass this now it should work so when stage b happens it should start working Okay, we did not do the preview image. That's the reason it failed at the first time. Okay. Okay, this doesn't work. We got four channels instead. Okay, I think I should actually get the decoder from here. Right. So this one is a 1024 comma 1024 and as we can see here it's actually a large matrix with all zeros in it right uh, so once you're done with this till you understand you can also try playing with the control net it's pretty similar you need to download different weights and put it in the corresponding control net folder probably we'll do another video that shows how to do control net in stable cascade Hope you like this video. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.